Gandhi, in a way, is the flag bearer of industrialization in Haryana. And I don't think any government in Haryana can afford to have, create a situation where people say that Maruti can't function, how can we function? Start at Manesar with a clean slate once again. The violence at the Maruti plant in Manesar last fortnight has sent shockwaves across Indian industry with many leaders now voicing their concern that this may not be an isolated case but part of a worrying and growing trend of labor unrest in India. Hello and welcome to We Mean Business. On the show today we ask how badly has the Maruti violence dented India's image. Joining me on the show today, Mr. KTS Tulsi, senior advocate and also somebody who's been appointed as a special prosecutor by the Haryana government for the Maruti case, uh, Prince Augustin, uh, executive vice chairman uh, and uh, group uh, of uh, your human development and leadership of uh, Mahindra and Mahindra, also Mr. Visti Banerjee, Executive Committee Member of the Employers Federation of India with me here in the Delhi studio. Amarjeet Kaur, Secretary of the All India Trade Union Congress. Uh, Kuldeep Jhangu, uh, he's the General Secretary of the Maruti Suzuki Union for the Gurgaon plant. And also Mr. R.C. Jain, uh, Chairman of the Regional Task Force on Industrial Relations of uh, CII. Many thanks all of you for joining us uh, on the show. But before we start our discussion, a quick look at some of the top stories uh, of the day today. India's worst power grid failure in a decade today cut electricity supplies to millions of people in seven states of North India, shutting transport networks and triggering complete commuter chaos as well as halting water supplies. Businesses across uh, much of Delhi, Haryana, Punjab and Himachal Pradesh as well as Uttar Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir and Rajasthan had to turn to power backups and generators while services on New Delhi's metro and Indian railways were suspended for several hours. Here's a report at all the chaos that took place. Monday mayhem is the northern grid that supplies power to eight states collapsed. The worst failure since 2001. A preliminary inquiry showed that it happened due to a transmission fault near Agra at around 2.30 in the morning. As a safety feature, all power plants across eight North Indian states automatically shut down, including 19 in Uttar Pradesh alone. 50.46 hertz pe chal rahi thi bizu, jo limit ke bahar thi. ये नॉर्दर्न ग्रिड फेल हो गया है तो भी इमीडिएटली हमने दूसरे लोड से ईस्टर्न ग्रिड से और वेस्टर्न ग्रिड से पावर लेना शुरू कर दिया है बट इट वाज अ नाइटमेयर फॉर अर्ली मॉर्निंग कम्यूटर्स देयर वाज केयर्स ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स ऑफ दिल्ली एज ट्रैफिक लाइट्स डिडंट वर्क दिल्ली मेट्रो सर्विसेज वर पैरालाइज्ड पैसेंजर्स कंप्लेंड ऑफ हैरेसमेंट द मूवमेंट ऑफ पैसेंजर एंड गुड्स ट्रेन्स ऑफ द नॉर्दर्न रेलवेज वाज सीवियरली अफेक्टेड एज़ वेल ये तो कभी भी नहीं यहाँ पे पावर कट ऑफ हमेशा सोलह से अठारह घंटे का पावर कट ऑफ होता है इलेक्ट्रिसिटी का प्रॉपर कोई भी सिस्टम यहाँ पर नहीं है विद नो पा सर्विस इन सम हॉस्पिटल एंड पेशेंट है टफ टाइम बारिंग इमरजेंसी सर्विस देर वॉज नो पा बैकअप फॉर अदर पेशेंट Operations had to be rescheduled and CT scans and MRI machines worked only for a few hours. Though most hospitals switched into emergency and power backup modes, medical services across the country were affected by the power failure. It was very difficult. I had to keep calling the compounder to give me IV, and I just put nebulizer the whole night. Kept taking oxygen, and that's how I passed my night. Very difficult. 
The government has formed a three-member panel to probe what went wrong. The power minister says it will take five to six years for the overall power situation to improve. The northern power grid is probably the largest grid in the country, but it still cannot match the demands of all the states that fall under it. Uttar Pradesh, for example, draws 12,000 megawatts of power per day. Due to the lethargy of the government, new power generating units have not been able to come up. So in the future, during crisis like what we saw today, is the government going to continue to be on damage control mode or are they going to chalk out a long-term solution? Bureau Report, NDTV. And the other big story, the Reserve Bank of India, head over the credit policy, has raised several red flags saying that the government should have taken corrective steps uh, to actually look at the fiscal situation. Here's a look at some of the key highlights of the macroeconomic review. Outlook for growth may be lower than anticipated. Growth has decelerated faster than envisaged. Lack of policy action has exacerbated the slowdown. Modest recovery possible if policy correctives are put in place. Upside risk to inflation projection remains significant. But the big question remains is whether the Reserve Bank of India is going to cut rates when it takes that crucial policy decision on Tuesday. Ritu tells us how divided the opinion is right now. Uh, the consensus this time around is clearly towards no expectation, at least as far as the, on the rate front, uh, essentially. 90% of our respondents, uh, economists, as well as bankers, said that they, will no, they don't expect any change on the repo rate at this policy. Neither uh, do a majority expect any change in the CRR. So on the CRR front also, it's an 80, a good 85% which say that there would be no change. However, for the rest of this year, uh, we are still uh, slightly on the positive side, uh, though there's a good 65% say that there's, there's likely to be a very little 25 to 50 basis points worth of cut on the uh, repo rate for the rest of this fiscal. So the expectations of rate cuts have clearly been toned down quite substantially. On the CRR front also it's largely coming in from the bankers, whatever the CRR cut expectations are because the liquidity situation is already fairly good right now. So 75% uh, still believe that for the rest of this fiscal we will not see any change in the CRR just yet. However, many of the bankers did say that yes, uh, there will be some change. They continue to expect at least 25 to 50 basis points. More importantly, for this policy we will also watch out for RBI's language on the, uh, the GDP growth as well as on the inflation front. Uh, there's a good, uh, you know, a heavy majority. Uh, Close to 90% expect that the RBI will revise the GDP growth numbers lower. 65% expect the GDP numbers to be revised uh, uh, to 6.5 to 7%. Uh, uh, there's a good 25% which expected to be even lower at 6 to 6.5%. Uh, just about 10% believe that RBI may want to wait for the monsoons to actually play out completely and only then change its guidance, if at all. Uh, on the inflation front, uh, uh, there's a good uh, you know, 60% say that RBI will not keep, not change the inflation forecast just yet, keep it at 6.5% that it has. 25% uh, say that yes, it will uh, possibly raise it up to 6.6 6 .6 to 7%, and 15% say that uh, RBI will raise it to over 7% uh, as soon as uh, uh, the policy on July 31st. So watch out for uh, some of uh, these guidance numbers from the RBI. But as of now, at least on the rate front, there is no expectation of any change uh, just yet. Back to you. But let's now move on to the big discussion and big focus on We Mean Business today. How badly has the incident in Manisa dented India's image and what are some of the lessons that we seem to have learned. Let me start by asking Mr. Katie Astulsi who's actually been appointed as a special prosecutor by the Haryana government to look at the case. Uh, Mr. Tulsi, what's the progress with regard to the probe and uh, how involved is the Haryana government in really trying to find out uh, what actually went wrong on that fateful day? Well, I think the investigation is at a very initial stage. And uh, they are trying to put the pieces of puzzle together. And uh, as a prosecutor, I really don't figure anywhere in the investigation process. Only when the investigators uh, need to ask me something, they may. But uh, I, on my own, cannot, can have, have no role at all in investigation, nor can I interfere in the process of investigation. But Mr. Tulsi, to talk My work about will start how... when I go to court. Right, absolutely, sir. We understand that. But just to talk about how badly this incident has really dented uh, uh, the image for Haryana in particular and India in general, uh, there are serious concerns that many industry leaders have raised after the terrible, terrible incident about how this may not really be an isolated case. And there are worries that we're seeing a rising trend of labor unrest in India. 
You see, all that I can say is uh, I, I would not like to talk about the present incident at all. But uh, all that I want to say is that in, in the case of industrial relations, the arguments uh, that take place between the workers and the management are more in the, in the form of arguments between husband and wife. All the time they are arguing, all the time there are issues, they are trying to get resolved, then fresh issues will crop up. Now, this is an ongoing process and there is a mechanism by which the disputes are sought to be resolved and if they are not resolved then they are adjudicated by the spe specified uh, machinery. My, my focus uh, and my role is uh, limited to the crime and uh, therefore I will not go beyond whatever is relevant from the point of view of the crime. At this stage of course my role hasn't even begun. Quite a heinous crime indeed given the fact that uh, an employee of Maruti had to lose his life uh, because of the kind of uh, labor unrest we saw on that particular day. But what is it that needs to be done here on to ensure that we never see such an incident actually repeat? Mr. Augustine, let me try and get a sense from you as to why we're seeing uh, this rising trend of, uh, of uh, employee and employer relationships really turning so sour that we have to see incidents like these take place. Uh, uh, first, I would say is um, there is a total disillusionment uh, amongst the employees about the way grievance redressal process happens. It takes months together for any dispute to be resolved. So the government machinery, I think people have taught, lot, totally lost trust upon. Uh, second is the growing inequity. Uh, in terms of uh, overall compensation and benefits from the lower end to the higher end. So that probably is going and the disparity is, is creating a loss of concern. And uh, third is uh, the, uh, we are going up, we are giving up a, a very, very peaceful process of redressal and trying to use uh, 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 what you will call is, is um, arm twisting mechanics. Uh, of resolving uh, issues uh, and therefore I would say there's a social deprivation which is taking place in the society uh, which uh, probably uh, is causing uh, people to look at uh, other alternative means of redressing disputes rather than going through a dialogue process of resolving issues. All right, Mr. R.C. Jain, uh, clearly we've got uh, chambers of industry very worried about the incident and uh, many of them have actually come out and, and voiced their concern. But are there any easy answers? Because as Mr. Augustine was telling us, this is, this is a huge underlying problem that cannot be resolved overnight. Yeah, I, I believe um, uh, there are a lot of actions that need to be taken at both hands, at the hands of the union as well as the, the management. I, as we know, the trade union which was in Manisar was a was consisting of very young people. Uh, I believe that it's time that we start training our young union leaders in in making them understand their rights and responsibilities. There should be a code of conduct, mm -hmm. and I think it's the role of the senior leaders who are outside, whether within the company or whatever influence they have from outside, as well as that of the management, mm -hmm. who need to train them and who have to bring the sensibility into them that they have a different role to play. I think that's one important thing. The second thing I find that there's a gap between what the top management understands about the ground realities. The ground realities sometimes are very different from what the top management sees. I had an occasion that in an industry relations seminar which we conducted about two, three weeks ago in which one of the general managers, HR of Maruti spoke and whatever he talked about, the welfare schemes, the redressal mechanisms, and the kind of actions and corporate social responsibility which Maruti is doing, uh, is sounded absolutely hunky-dory, uh, as though nothing could go wrong. And right. two to three weeks later, we see this unfortunate thing to happen. Obviously, the boardroom is different from what the ground reality is. So we need to bridge that. And, and it's a huge gap that clearly and, and needs to gap. be bridged. But I think the most important thing is that to a worker, the management or the company is not the top management. It is Im immediate superior. Right. That is his supervisor or maybe uh, at the most a manager of the shop floor. And he represents the vision of the company. He represents what the company is all about. And I think we need to train them as how to manage 
at how to engage the shop floor workmen on the shop, uh, in, in the right manner. So it has to come across. Uh, it has to come across right from top, top down. Right. The engagement doesn't stop at, at one level alone. It's all the way. कुलदीप जी मारुति में इतनी हालत क्यों बिगड़ गई है कि हमने इस तरीके का दर्दनाक इंसिडेंट देखा उस दिन आ, ऐसा क्या गड़बड़ हो गई है क्यों इतना गैप आ रहा है जैसे कि अभी हमें मिस्टर जैन बता रहे थे कि एक एक बहुत समझने का गैप है जो मैनेजमेंट कह रहा है और जो वहाँ के कर्मचारी कह रहे हैं इतना क्यों ये गैप बढ़ चुका है ये श्रमिक और अधिकारी के बीच में या यूनियन और अधिकारी के बीच में जो ट्रस्ट होता है विश्वास होता है इसमें बहुत ज़्यादा गैप हो गया इसमें गैप ये हो गया कि अधिकारी वर्ग मैनेजमेंट यूनियन की सुन नहीं रही थी यूनियन के यूनियन जो चीज़ ग्राउंड जो जमीनी चीज़ें जो असली समस्याएं बता रही हैं उनको नहीं समझ पा रही है। पर पर जहाँ तक कि ये कहा जा रहा है कि ठीक है एक ट्रस्ट गैप है लेकिन फिर भी इस तरीके का इंसिडेंट होना कि किसी की जान ले ली जाए ये ये, ये, ये इस चीज के इस इतने हालात क्यों बिगड़ गए कि यहाँ तक बात पहुँच गई आपकी बात बिल्कुल जायज है इस तरह का जो हिंसक घटना हुई है ये गलत है ये मैं भी इसके खिलाफ हूँ और पूरा देश पूरा संसार इसके खिलाफ है कि इस तरह की घटना को अंजाम देना किसी समस्या का समाधान नहीं है परंतु आप ये देखें टू थाउजेंड में जो दो दो हज़ार में हमारा एडिटेशन हुआ था और उसमें कई चीज़ें ऐसी होगी काफ़ी लोगों को निकाल दिया था और मजदूर को जो समस्या थी वो नहीं मिल पाई उससे हमारा एक वेट सेटलमेंट जो था वो भी मिस हो गया उसकी वजह से उसके बाद करीब पच्चीस सौ लोगों को वी आर दे दी गई वी के बाद एक डर वाला माहौल पैदा हो गया डर वाला माहौल पैदा होने के बाद श्रमिकों का मजदूरों का नेतृत्व नहीं मिला कोई चुनाव नहीं हुए वो एक मतलब बगैर चुनाव के यूनियन बॉडी हर दो साल में बनती रही एक सरकारी कागजी कार्रवाई तो कंप्लीट की लेकिन श्रमिकों को उनका नेतृत्व नहीं मिला उनकी समस्या ऊपर तक रखने था वो टू दो में जो चुनाव हुए सोलह जुलाई को और 2000 से लेकर 2011 हजार सोलह जुलाई तक का जो गैप था वो श्रमिकों की समस्याएं रखने वाला ऊपर नहीं था या जिस तरीके से रखनी थी उस तरीके से रखने वाला कोई था नहीं और वो गैप इसलिए बहुत ज्यादा a big gap there let me ask mr visti banerji because we've actually seen the employers federation of india come out and take a very strong view after this incident mr banerji uh, the employers federation of india clearly condemning the manisar violence uh, but here on uh, what what seem to be the big issues uh, that your federation has raised uh, after uh, the terrible incident i believe we should look at uh, this issue from four distinct perspectives you know there are some practices which operate at the level of a plant location and in the case of manesar the rest of us sitting at a distance are unlikely to fathom till there is a more detailed investigation what happened i refer to the kind of practices which organizations adopt for planning their work the kind of breaks they permit the kind of relationships and both ramesh and the uh, union chief from gurgaon spoke about these the proximity of the supervisors to the workforce these are all practices which make or break industrial harmony moving a step further back and as we move back we get clearer perspectives as well as perspectives which apply to larger sections than an individual unit these are determined by the quality of people we have in employee relations as well as the quality of people we have leading unions i have no particular knowledge about manesar but in general the quality of resource and the development of resource in employee relations is not what it used to be 20 years ago the stature and selflessness of union leadership 
is not always what it used to be in the past. I take a step further back and talk of the engagement of flexible manpower. And here too, all of us, the government, employers, unions, as well as employee relations professionals, need to equip ourselves with the new reality and the fairness that is necessary for dealing with this group, which was a very much smaller proportion of the industrial workforce as late as 10 years ago. And lastly, and most fundamentally, one of the reasons leading to this degree of flexible manning is the bedrock of inflexible labor laws this country has. And in a sense, till those laws are more progressively and in a more enlightened fashion recast, the temptation will always lie to resort to more flexible manpower and right. sometimes the consequences of disparities can be serious. All right, let me actually take some of those issues forward that you have raised, uh, uh, very valid points there, but uh, the, the All India Trade Union Congress, Amarjit Ji, has clearly said that they want a CBI probe in this incident, obviously blaming uh, the Maruti management for the terrible incident. But also, if we, if we take this not just as an isolated case, but the need for larger trust coming up between the management uh, and uh, uh, employees and workers. Uh, what is the way forward you suggest uh, in such a case? No, first of all, I agree that it's not one instance. As uh, your report is pointing about uh, Noida incident, Ghaziabad incident, Coimbatore incident, then in Rico a worker was killed and then the blame Absolutely. was put on a worker. Uh, it is a larger issue and uh, it is a tension which is rising in India between capital and labor. He is talking about in, inflexible labor laws. I would rather say that labor law violation is rampant. And uh, when Mr. Watson was talking about uh, gaps and grievances not being addressed, I fully agree with him. Grievances are not being addressed, Kuldeep also said. And the gaps is not only in communication, as uh, Ramesh ji was saying. Gaps are also regular employee and contract, lab contract laborer. Mm -hmm. And the issue is that the wages are two times, three times difference and no coverage of ESI and PF. It's too meager an amount. So there were so many things. Another thing before I come to give my suggestions, I would say, just now uh, the word used was uh, outside uh, elements or the outside unions influencing uh, the workers. Rather, Maruti, since Suzuki entered into Maruti in 1996, have been have been violating labor laws, not respecting unions, and uh, always talking in terms of no outside influence in the way that the central trade unions should have nothing to do with it. They want unions only which should listen to only managements and should not have their independent view or try to become matured. If anybody is talking about maturity of workers and their leaders, then how they will become matured until and unless they are exposed to the outside atmosphere, they, they are able to talk to other unions or they are able to seek help and assistance of the but established also, trade unions. have you also joined the country in condemning the kind of, of violence course, that took place? Of course, of course. While everybody understands. Yes, yes. Violence from police or from management or violence in agitation from workers. We condemn all kinds of workers uh, of violence. We have not forgotten how the workers were beaten so badly in 2005 in Honda. So uh, uh, we condemn violence. This should have not happened. But let us remember the, the kind of simmering tension which was growing over there. For 10 years, the company, what has company chief spoken here, the official who is here? Just seven days ago, he said, uh, we were very peaceful for 10 years. There was no outside influence. And here also, uh, there was no outside influence. And they are feeling happy about it that the young workers between the age group of 20 and 25 have no connections with the mature leadership outside. So they were saying outside. That means they always thought 
इन जापान दे कैन अलाउ यूनियंस वेन दे कम टू इंडिया यहाँ तो सब चलता है चीप लेबर है यू डू एनी थिंग यू लेबर लॉ वायलेशन एनी थिंग यू डू सो देर हैज बीन सिमरिंग टेंशन द इशूज आर नॉट एड्रेस्ड द यूनियन लास्ट ईयर देर वॉज एजुटेशन इन प्रोसेस ऑफ लॉ and we in cii definitely believe that is the fundamental right of the workmen yes. that they should form a union but equally important is that trade union law also needs certain corrections for example the antecedents of the of the applicants or the people who are behind the formation of trade union need to be checked when they register such trade unions Absolutely. this probably is not being done right would you agree with that amarji ji ha huh? that the antecedents of those who are setting up trade unions need to who be checked who sets up the people whom you give employment don't you check their check their antecedents you you employ workers and employees after checking then it is the very same workers inside the plant who try to make unions Mr. so Kate, i, I welcome your step that yeah. you said that union is our right it comes from constitution of india it comes from trade union act uh, i am very happy that you are saying it and many places we have unions we don't have problems with the management we do have settlements we uh, do have agreements and all but if any management especially maruti suzuki management is caring for hoods they don't bother 2500 he said we are 500 workers were retrenched till today not even vrs benefits given to them what do this maruti suzuki management thinks that they are in india and they can do anything with anybody then i think i i didn't finish that was sure. just one point sure, go ahead. i think the second point on trade union law is that today 10% of representation of workmen can form a trade union right i think it's a very small number right. we don't want multi multiplicity of the unions in a, in any company i think it should be at least 30% so right. that we have less a number of unions which can be better managed my third point is like you like labor departments audited the comp audits the company with respect to the labor laws and you know factory inspector come and inspect the factories why should we not have a similar kind of inspection by the labor department on trade unions uh, are they very valid points are uh, been uh, are they following the rules of the law i mean and things of the kind managements are not following the rule inspections are we can for last 20 years labor law reforms are meaning to hit the workers and not uh, you no, see no, no, i am not saying i want i want mind inspection i am yes. not saying please unions please, also please audit the managements also <laughs> the industrial relationship also there should be inspection of all yeah. unions are not afraid yeah. but then but, in that but unions case, would be willing to willing to undergo any inspection we will go if every union is allowed to have their independent opinion they want to be affiliated to any union or not unions should be independent of management should be independent of governments unions should be independent of political parties i agree I totally and agree. i respect yeah. but then managements have to understand that unions have every right to remain independent or to have affiliations or to have guidance from any established M trade unions M all right let me let, let me just take that point forward to mr kts tulsi while i come back to you mr jain mr kts tulsi you've heard several sides of the argument here what one does realize is that yes there is a need to look at uh, the current labor laws in india there is a need to understand what really is going wrong but after hearing some of the arguments what are what are your key takeaways are we going to see uh, any of this getting resolved easily because this is just a uh, one bit of the kind of tension and stress that we are seeing right now and we can just imagine what really happens on the ground with a uh, long list of demands that some of the workers have the managements have their own issues so there clearly aren't uh, any easy answers to this entire uh, industrial relations mess that we are seeing in the country well firstly i want to make it clear that so far as i am concerned my focus is the crime and right, the crime right. or well, bring the evidence before the courts it's a, it's the most heinous crime under the penal code it's one of those crimes which attracts even death penalty if if it is established that it was a preplanned cold blooded murder now uh, the other uh, with regard to industrial relations it's a larger issue 
which doesn't come within the scope of the proof or the defense of the crime. Motivation of the crime is altogether different. The question is, is it grave and sudden provocation on the spur of the moment? At that time when you are killing, what is the provocation which is legally, legally excusable? Now, all that I would say is that so far as Maruti is concerned, I am not aware except that it was the first uh, foreign car which got built in 1980s. And at that time, all that I remember from, from my earlier days is that Maruti had established a great work culture and brought in a new work culture in this country. And the Maruti workers had a glorious tradition all these years. They were so, it was like a breath of fresh air where the chairman, the managing director, everybody would wear the same uniform, eat in the same canteen. It was an egalitarian setup which, which the Japanese brought and which was emulated by hundreds and thousands of industry, industries in the, all across the country. Now, right. they set up a new benchmark. I don't know how things could have degenerated. What, what is it? I'm not really concerned. I'm only concerned with the fact that whatever the investigation shows, the manner in which the crime is, the preparation is made, the conspiracy is entered into, and then it is executed. That's the scope of the crime so far as this is concerned. Industrial relations, of course, I, I don't think in India the industrial relations have gone to such a low ebb. We have an open society. Workers have very valid rights. There is a machinery which perhaps need to be made more, uh, more efficient, where the disputes can get resolved faster. Our entire adjudicatory process in the country is far too slow, and it, it loses its efficacy. Same is with the industrial, uh, industrial law, and I believe that the government must take urgent steps to ensure that the, the genuine grievances are resolved by the machinery and not allowed to fester for years on end, because that will uh, do a lot of harm to the industrial peace and the industrial relations. All right, Mr. Tulsi, and a very, very valid point that you've raised there uh, is the fact that we need to differentiate between two issues that we are discussing here. One, of course, is, is a yeah. clear murder that took place, a crime that took place in this case, for which, in any case, a probe is taking yeah. place, and, of course, the larger issue of industrial relations that we seem to be discussing on the show. When it comes to the crime in particular, while... while everyone condemns it uh, it's also important to send out a right message that this kind of violence and this kind of a crime will not be tolerated however low the relationship or the issues and the tensions really right. go between the management and the workers in that sense uh, it's also important that the probe is fast-tracked as well as also very important right. that the strictest possible punishment is given in this case after the investigation is over to yeah. send out that larger message do we see that happening mr. That's Tulsi? Well, I, I hope that's, that's exactly my brief. My brief is that the investigation should uh, wrap up the investigation and file the charge sheet, final opinion in the court. And my, I will request the court for day-to-day -day trial so that we don't spend years if it has to have meaning. If it is, you see, the society needs to attain catharsis, that justice is done. And if it is delayed, it has a, it's very counterproductive for the society and therefore my, my, my task will be and my aim will be that the trial must get concluded within a year from now. And would a, would, a year be, would a year be, be, be fair enough in the sense given the way we've seen some of the past uh, uh, industrial dispute cases dragging on for, for a very, very long time. You feel that a year is the right timeline within which we should see the investigation getting completed. Also in terms of the kind of punishment for this heinous crime, Mr. Tulsi, a very quick word before we take a break. I, I, that will be my endeavor. And I will do everything to, to uh, persuade the courts to have day-to-day -day trial and br bring all the witnesses and not let the matter get delayed through dilatory tactics of any party. And therefore, we will, we will definitely try our darnest to see that the case is brought to a conclusion. With the, uh, we will make a request to the High Court. We'll make a request to the Chief Justice for 
uh, providing a court which will devote its time, if maybe if necessary exclusively to this trial, and let the trial be over, because otherwise the, the, the industrial peace is so fragile in the area that uh, there is always a fear of such events getting repeated. All right, on that note, we're going to take a quick break, but we've got all our panelists still with us as we take forward the issue, move beyond that terrible crime to also discuss some of the lessons learned and how we can ensure that such an incident uh, is never repeated in India's industrial history. Also, labor laws, not ne what needs to be done there. All that coming up after a quick break. Maruti, in a way, is the flag bearer of industrialization in Haryana. And I don't think any government in Haryana can afford to have, create a situation where people say that Maruti can't function, how can we function? Start at Manesar with a clean slate once again. Welcome back. You're with We Mean Business, and we're discussing whether the terrible incident at Maruti's Manesar plant is going to dent India's image and what needs to be done here on to ensure we do not see such an incident repeating ever again. Uh, Mr. Augustine, uh, we've heard some of the views that are coming in here. When it comes to the issue of labor laws in particular, uh, we've got Amarjit Ji here saying that uh, companies are violating labor laws. Uh, we've also got other views coming in from those, including Mr. Jain, saying that there is a need for an urgent overhaul of labor laws. Are we going to see the Maruti incident at least uh, ensuring that we move forward in a direction uh, of, uh, of uh, at least uh, overhauling labor laws in a way that we do not uh, at least see such incidents taking place again and it actually is more conducive to industrial relations rather than hampering them. I, 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 would, I, I do not know whether we can say that there will be an overall of labor laws because it is not an easy thing to change the entire judicial machinery or the way the laws get enacted, etc. because you have got to get a multitude of parties to really agree. The real test is how is the Haryana government really going to respond to this? Will they set up a special tribunal to ensure that the disputes uh, the entire dispute and investigation is carried out not in one year's time frame but within a six months time frame. If they have the will, they can definitely make it happen. And this is a test in the right direction. Uh, next, uh, we have got to ensure uh, that there is a big social dialogue that takes place across the country. I do not believe that laws are uh, 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 answer to many of the problems that we face. All the parties should actually come together, the trade unions, the government, the various employers associations, etc. In fact, in the National HRD Network, uh, we have uh, started dialoguing with EFI and several other associations and trade unions so that we can come together and create what is known as a code of conduct which employers will have to observe, trade unions will have to observe, and governments will have to observe. This is not the time to really find out who is complying, who is uh, doing what, etc. This is a state of an emergency where the whole world is observing us. Uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we are actually going to become a global economy. And if a global economic power needs to conduct, make its own rules and games of the game to ensure that employment is carried out in very, very fair way, there is equity across sections. And what I find there's a big gap is when you speak of contract labor and permanent labor, the gap which exists, the equity of uh, wages for various skills does not exist in our country. How do we create an equitable pay structure for the skills that exist? What sort of national wage policy should we be having so that we are able to ensure equity and disparity is reduced to a large extent? Uh, and Mr. finally, Tulsi had a point how to make. I'm, I'm just going to toss over to Mr. Tulsi, who has a point to make before I go to the other panelists also, because I know they all have reactions to even Mr. Tulsi's comments okay. uh, before the break. Mr. Tulsi, go ahead, sir. 
Well, I, I believe that uh, in, in this case, uh, uh, it's very important that uh, the disputes get resolved. But we must not permit the instance, instances like road rage is multiplying the instances of industrial rage resulting in such heinous violence and murders. So for that, there, there needs to be an exemplary um, punishment based on the evidence which is decided and if necessary, the extreme punishment. The police in this case had, has perhaps acted with a great amount of restraint because they did not use force with the workers until they had started killing. In, in China, the police has routinely uh, resorted to firing on the workers, with, which in India doesn't happen because India is a more open society, it's, an, it's a more tolerant society where the rights of the workers are respected. And in this case also the rights, if they were respected by the police and they showed restraint if that is established, it will make the, 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 the crime even more uh, reprehensible. And uh, I am really f f focusing on the crime because the rest of the matters are matters of debate and how the industrial machinery needs to be streamlined as for faster and immediate uh, decisions which, which are possible. Um, Amar Jiji has a point yes, to make. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, Tulsi ji, I think that uh, uh, much is known by, no, by now uh, that uh, there was a suffocation because of which uh, Avnish died. It's a question of death which happened because of violence which happened over there, but it's not a murder, and you are using the term murder. Murder is always having murder. intention and motivation. I, how, how bef yes. before going into investigation, one can come out to that situation. That violent situation should have been avoided, and management is responsible. Police the was present over is of there. Murder, even if in all the that anger was building up, then how, how the others did? What has wife of uh, Avanish said? She said that the person who went over there, the policeman, if he would have timely checked that room, which the officer colleague himself from the hospital bed said that. He found one person, but he didn't go to that conference room where Avnish was there because, his le because of his legs he could not come out. So you cannot use the word murder from the very beginning of this investigation. This is my first submission. It's, it's a and murder second, case that is registered. We, we, it's a murder case that yeah, is being it is investigated. It is a death. All right, Mr. Tulsi, it's murder. A murder it's case not has death. Has yeah, been registered. It's, it's murder. It's not death. I agree, but when the investigation it's a murder case happened, which is investigated. Ca case may be registered as murder when investigations happen. There is always a possibility of making the changes. When rash driving Inve kills somebody, it's always 304B and not 302. This if is rash, rash act driving. has happened there, which has ultimately no, resulted into have... death, which is very serious the, issue. Anyway, we the all physical have to be contours. Sorry I don't about want to it discuss also, that. Justice should be done. We don't want to defend Justice those who were done. culprits. But what happened? Hundreds Justice of the workers done. were arrested without uh, knowing if Amar they were Ji, involved. I wish they to assure you that Justice will eventually be done. Justice will definitely uh, be course, done. Of course, but then we would, we would want also to little bit go into what kind of anger was uh, the, the, the workers were seething with the anger. But, bouncers, but does, but does, uh, does being kept by But does anything owners. justify what happened to Avnish is the no, question there. Nothing not perhaps justified. justifies that. And that's the point that even Mr. Tulsi there is making, making that justice needs to be done. And, yes, and quite importantly, the nation is waiting for the justice uh, to take place finally because yes. it's, it's an act clearly that the country has condemned. Uh, nothing yeah. should have happened to such a great level yes. that uh, uh, such, an, um, such a respected uh, HR our official had to lose his life. Uh, uh, let me actually get um, Kuldeep here to respond to some of the points that have been raised here. Kuldeep ji, here pe Amar ji ji keh rahi hai ki ye ek death ka mamla hai, ye ek murder nahi hua hai. Jabke hamme Mr. K T S Tulsi, jo special prosecutor hai, Haryana government se appoint kiye gaye hai, unhone ye kaha hai ki ek murder case register ho chuka hai. Uh, kin halato me uh, Avnish ki death hui, ye ek investigation ka mamla hai. Lekin ye nahi uh, deny kiya ja sakta hai ki itni baat bigar gayi thi ki अवनीश की इन हालातों में मौत हो गई देखो मैं तुलसी जी की इज्जत करता हूं और मेरे से बड़े उम्र में और काफी ज्ञानी हैं मैं उनको कहना चाहूंगा कि जब तक जांच नहीं आ जाती आप किसी को यह नहीं बोल सकते 
कि वो दोषी है या निर्दोष है उसका मर्डर हुआ है या किसी को नहीं बोल रहे दोषी उसका किन्नी हालातों में उनकी मौत हो गई तो उन, उनको ऐसा नहीं बोलना चाहिए अगर उन्होंने ऐसा है तो सीधे सीधे वो किसी के इशारे पे ऐसा बोल रहे हैं मैं ऐसा मानता हूँ ये किसी के तुलसी जी ऐसा किसी के इशारे बोल रहे हैं जब उनकी जो घुटनों में जो हमें जानकारी मिली है मीडिया के थ्रू जानकारी मिली है कि उनके घुटनों में चोट लगी थी आग लगी घुटनों में चोट लग गई थी या फिर उनको मारा गया था ये तो अभी एक इन्वेस्टिगेशन का मामला है इन्वेस्टिगेशन का मामला है तो इसमें हम कुछ नहीं कह सकते ये कहना गलत है कि उसका मर्डर हुआ है ये जांच होने के बाद ही पता चल पाएगा कि मिस्टर तुलसी क्विक रिस्पॉन्स बिफोर वी मूव ऑन मिस्टर तुलसी I am not going to uh, disclose the contours of investigation at this stage because they will prejudice someone or the other. But I can tell you that the the broad uh, uh, case that is built up in the investigation itself in the FIR is that he was attacked, his legs were broken with the iron bars, and then he was thrown there, and the match was lit. Now that clearly does make out the murder because it is the manner in which. he was attacked was to kill him if that is so if if that is established we don't know who it is but if that is so whoever it is will have to be tried for murder this is not a natural death it's a death which has been caused with the intention to cause death by whoever it is that that will that will be revealed by the investigation and the police at the moment is in the thick of the investigation to ascertain as to which are the persons who are responsible for this murder they can, we cannot run away from the fact that this is a murder i would like to respond to what mr watson was saying not rather response rather i would say that uh, one is that uh, uh, what he said code of conduct should be there the issue of uh, national wage he raised uh, then asking for haryana government to act uh i agree with him as far as that is concerned but this issue of reform reform is a very good word reform for whom reform is a very good word <coughs> reform for whom reform in favor of labor or reform in favor of management to make it so flexible that the workers continue to remain seething with anger and resulting in those into these kinds of conflict situations or weakening the unions for that who can at least give vent to the workers anger and anguish and have a kind of a resolvement system where settlements could be done and uh, the process could be uh, carried forward mr so banerji uh, let me get your response to the discussion that we've heard so far and while we've got amarjeet ji talking about the workers anger uh, we've also got mr tulsi and others saying that nothing can really justify uh, what took place uh, uh, at the manasar plant of maruti at, but yet uh, uh, what we're seeing is that this perhaps should be a wake up call a wake up call uh, for the government a wake up call for states uh, that need to obviously ensure that this doesn't happen a wake up call clearly uh, for employers as well as for unions uh, do we see us moving in that direction mr banerji i agree with you fully that uh, this is indeed a wake up call it's not the first one and unless we wake up we will be in the midst of a nightmare uh, i don't think anyone on this panel is today in a position to talk about the tragic events at manesar and i think those of us who are blaming the management there are perhaps doing so without anyone with knowledge of the reality on the ground present in our panel to respond i once again like to take us back to a perspective where indeed we can generate a debate and hopefully lead to constructive action and that point i'm afraid does involve reform and i believe that reform is intended so that the goose can continue to lay golden eggs and not get slaughtered i don't think we are cognizing as part of this debate which we should that these are all competing organizations which do not have the luxury of an antiquated labor regime it's like asking people 
not to use computers, but not even to use calculators, but to use an abacus in today's day and age. India has so far followed considerable reform, but the reform that is necessary to unshackle not just growth, but to make India a manufacturing hub with all the attendant employment it brings. Because please remember, the other face of rigid labor laws is higher unemployment. That's the contrast which, which, which is frequently hidden when we talk of labor reform for the sake of who? Labor reform has to be for the sake of a strong growing economy and for the sake of greater employment. I underline that with three lines because what could be the reason why the most reputed employers in the country shy away from engaging more people? And why is it that we have a demographic dividend which is on the point of becoming a demographic detonation unless we are able to make employment easier, more, more um, facile for managements to engage more people when they need them, train them. And this really is the domain which both unions, managements, and ER professionals like ourselves need to address. So, or bottom let me line, get closing comments what now can we, we clearly do run out of time to enhance employment? Right, right. So a lot of a lot of objectives there that need to be met. But closing comments from you, yeah. Mr. Jain, because uh, we really need to wrap up the discussion. Yeah of time but uh, uh, given given some of the points that mr banerji has raised uh, and of course uh, what some of the other panelists had raised about uh, parity in terms of wages about uh, the rigid labor laws uh, at least some of these issues can be addressed in a more short term yeah. immediate manner i think i just wanted to respond to amadeep ji talked about independence of trade union uh, i i feel it it's extremely important that the trade union leadership should be totally independent the external influence, as far as possible, should not be there. Right. Probably we cannot avoid it right. in, in the size of a company like Maruti and large companies. But should that be any external influence, it should be more for mentoring and engaging the trade unions towards making them partner in progress rather than a negative influence. Now, a couple of, couple of more important points which I just want to mention. I think we're, we're really out of yeah. time, but if you could just wrap up in, wrap up yeah. in a minute. I'm, I'm, One is, I'm sorry. Just I have just five quick time. points. Five quick points. One is we need to train the union leaders. We need ground level uh, employee engagement between the management and the union and the work, workforce. Right. We need proactive labor department. We need some corrective action on some of the labor laws. In, especially in Industrial Dispute Act and Trade Union Act. A long list which we'll have to see how quickly we can really implement but for now at least the hope is that uh, with regard to this particular incident uh, at Manisa the investigation is fast tracked and at least uh, we can see some sensitivity returning as far as industrial disputes are concerned and we do not see another Manisa happen ever again. Thanks so much all of you for joining us and sharing your views on this discussion. With that it's a wrap here on We Mean Business today. Thanks Thanks for watching, goodbye.